it's all about connecting to the energy it's and opening up to it and letting it surrender it's a path of surrender and you're saying i can't do this and i surrender to something greater than me awareness the final frontier these are the explorations of jonathan robinson and brian tom o'connor their continuing mission to discover fresh new paths to the mystery within to seek out new joys and new methods of awakening, to boldly go into the heart of expanded consciousness. This is Awareness Explorers. Welcome back, friends and family of Awareness Explorers. It's great to have you because we have a very exciting episode today. I'm Jonathan Robinson. I'm with my co-host, Brian Tom O'Connor. And we're both excited about having Gareth Dignam here. He's a teacher who has a book called Waking Up from the Dream. And I'll give you a little bit about information about Gareth, but I've been going to his Zoom transmissions, which is something that I used to not believe in until People like him would send energy over Zoom to the point that uh, felt as subtle as a sledgehammer, but in a good way. So I'm very excited about being able to ask Gareth a bunch of questions about his path. Let me give you a little bit of bio about him. Gareth Dagnum was born in Dublin, Ireland. An awakening directed him towards becoming a teacher able to transmit powerful transformative energies, including Shaktipat and the supermental force. A unique aspect of his teaching style is that he sees himself as a friend, an equal, and a teammate to his students, rather than a guru. And his mission is to empower others to reach the heights that he himself has reached. Welcome to Awareness Explorers, Gareth. I'm really happy that you're here. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Brian. Hey, Gareth. Me too. I'm very glad you're here. Yeah, very excited for this. Thank you. Now, just for our listeners, it's good to know that I've explored a fair amount of transmissions in vortex healing and gurus, and I used to not believe that that can be transmitted over Zoom, and people like Gareth and others have very ably convinced me otherwise. Brian's a little bit more of a skeptic about the whole transmission thing, so we'll have different types of questions. Right. Um, and full disclosure, I've gone to Gareth's transmissions, maybe about uh, five or six of them that he does for free over Zoom on every Tuesday and Friday, which uh, we'll let our listeners know about. And yesterday, I did one with Gareth, a uh, one-on-one thing where you make a donation for that. And I must say, Gareth, those two transmissions felt totally different. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not... Uh, are, are you trying to transmit different things when you're doing it one-on-one versus a group? Or what what is happening that that can make sense to me? Okay, so in, in a one-on-one, I'm dedicating all of my effort just to you, okay? Uh, with a group, I, there was like the one last night, I think there was 55 people. It's more of a general baseline transmission that goes out to everybody but when i do a one-to-one i'm it's almost like i'm the forces or the energies are becoming organized around me and i'm able to direct them in your system almost to carry out psychic surgery so i can i can activate things and open up different chakras so they feel totally different Brian, I'm curious as to what question, what would help you to become a transmission believer versus skeptic? Mm, that's a good question. I um, Probably the best key for my luck would be the idea, which you did mention in your book, Gareth, that instead of I mean, I've never experienced something coming from another person to me. I, I, but yet in the presence of other people, I feel that we are connected in the background. In other words, when I drop into noticing and being pure awareness, I feel 
like that is the substratum of all existence. And I feel that what's looking out through my eyes is looking out through yours. And so I can believe that there's a connection in the in the background of experience between us that 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 we can connect to. So so you're right. So 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 it is, there is a substratum that we're all sharing. Okay, universal consciousness that is what we are at the very core of our nature. Okay, and we all share that same consciousness. Okay, you exist within me, and I exist within you. So and and these transmissions they're not limited by space and time because consciousness is fundamental. Consciousness is what carries these and the energies. Um, it's like there's flavors. There's different flavors. You can sit in peace. You can it, it, the the energies can become rapturous. They can take you into deep states of samadhis. So there's all these subtle nuances, different flavors that we can get to enjoy. Frequencies, almost like we're tuning in the dial of a transistor radio. We can go and we can we can do it. One of the things I found out early was I could tune into masters that no longer live on this planet anymore you know all i would need was their their name uh i would think about them and i could dial into their frequency and their state and i could experience it and how did this come about i mean in the beginning uh, of your book in the first half it's very focused on out of body experiences and and lucid dreaming were these things that led to this yeah. or were these yeah. sort of like like cities, like certain powers on the side that weren't directly, you know, that 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 weren't directly uh, causal to this ability to transmit. Okay, so it's a good question. Um, they were cities, and they had absolutely nothing to do with awakening and um, you know, like self realization and and these states. They were just, it was just psychic phenomena that I was interested in. And then it started to happen to me. Okay. But I also feel that it was a very, very important part. So all of these lucid dreams and out of body experiences sort of gave me a framework of when I had this spiritual awakening in the gym, it was like, oh, I've, I've experienced lucid dreams before, and this awakening was something greater than me that awoke in my form here. So then I had a context. I had a, oh, this is what's happened. It's not just a random thing I had no explanation for. I knew that something greater than me that was outside of my, my world woke up and looked out through my eyes. Yeah. And what did happen in the gym? You wrote very vividly about it in the book, but can you tell us a little about that? So so I wasn't the typical spiritual seeker that you would have seeking enlightenment. I, I didn't really understand what enlightenment was. OK, I was I was very much interested in consciousness. I was very much interested in meditation and mystical experiences, but I didn't have any knowledge of enlightenment i didn't it just wasn't something that came up for me and a number of years after all of the the, the out of body experiences um i was just in the gym one morning and i stopped and i could hear the noises the music the light was coming in through the windows and i just decided to stop and ponder and something made me realize that the sounds were not outside the what I was seeing, you know, there the, the was beautiful sun coming in through the windows. It wasn't outside. I was experiencing it all inside my consciousness. And as soon as I said that, there was what felt like Velcro ripped within my mind. It went like this. And then all of a sudden, a rush of reality. Okay, it's something greater than me literally just woke up like 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 it when I would experience a lucid dream and I would become lucid in a dream. I was like, oh, I'm in a dream. Something greater woke up. I And I knew what it was. I knew it was universe, God, whatever, whatever name you want to put on it, a supreme being of some sort started looking out of my eyes. And then all of this supreme knowledge started to come into my system flowing in. I knew that I, I had created everything. I was, I was, I was the, 
I was the, the being looking out through my eyes. I had created all of this reality for me to enjoy. Uh, I was veiling it. I was in every person that I laid my eyes on. Sounds like quite an experience. Um, do you believe that? I, I'm curious what your definition of awakening or enlightenment is now, because I know you've been through a lot of different changes of consciousness, a lot of different frequencies or experiences. Mm -hmm. How do you define yeah. or measure that now? So uh, when you say define, Jonathan, um, I mean, so, so that peak experience closed down because my nervous system wasn't able to maintain that. So so it was like too much. There was tears rolling down my eyes, down my cheeks. Uh, I was like, I, I just couldn't take it in. It was so much overwhelming. My nervous system couldn't handle it. And, you know, within 10 minutes, that aperture closed down. But I was then left in a in a, a state of self-realization. The self was awake. Fear had fallen away immediately. From that one awakening, fear was gone from my system. Um, there was a deep sense of peace. I knew at the center of what I was, I was unbounded awareness that never dies. It was never born. It will be there all the time, just witnessing and allowing my life. Now, I wasn't perfect by any means. The ego was still there. There was still a lot of work refinement to happen with the with the human. But that was the very start. That was the start. That was the start of me becoming a spiritual seeker. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm curious there's different systems of spiritual awakening from awareness practices to prayer to all the different religions. And yours seems to be largely based on receiving transmissions from, say, different divine beings or teachers. And do you think that that is a path everybody can benefit from? Or is that more like your system was just geared to awaken through such experiences? Okay, so it's not a path for everybody. It's, it's, there's a dry path, which is like the awareness side, uh, you know, self-inquiry. And then it, what I would say, the Shakti side, the, very much the experience, the direct experience, uh, meditating with them energies, feeling them in the body. So there's the, there's two, two sides to awakening. There's perception. There's the perceptions that awaken. Uh, and then there is the body that has the experience of, of enlightenment or awakening. And uh, I I feel both are very much needed. You, you want to have the awareness and then you want to have the enjoyment of how it feels in the body. Mm -hmm. and, when, and that came uh, with the transmissions. Yeah. When uh, I receive transmissions, I'm very much affected by them usually for, you know, a few minutes, maybe a few hours. Is there spiritual benefit to, is it kind of like each time they raise your frequency a little bit till eventually you, you stay in higher states or how do you see yeah. that? Yeah. It's, it's almost like taking two chilling forks and bringing them together. You've got one that's resonating at a high frequency. You bring another one in close pro proximity and that will eventually you know, come to the same vibration. Uh, so that's 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 how I experienced it. It was like I discovered that there were certain individuals on the planet that I needed to go to. Intuitively, I just knew it was like, yes, I would, you know, come across an interview or, you know, an article. And I'd say, OK, I need to go see this this being. And uh, I would receive transmissions. Sometimes it was just one workshop and that was all I needed. I, I would get what I needed and off I went. Uh, but there was there was like three or four that were really uh, important for me. And you wrote in your book that there are three main energies that you work with and can transmit. Shaktipat, the light transmission, and the uh, supramental force. Could you talk a little bit about the yes. difference among these three and which you prefer and why? Yeah. Okay. So at certain stages along my none, there's no one that is better than another Okay, it's just that at certain stages along the journey, 
one might be needed. Okay. And it's just knowing what you need. So for me, the, the first transmission that I received was Shakti Pat. And that, that literally that first intensive that I went to, that awoken, my Kundalini was already awoke, but it put up so much um, that I started experiencing incredible bliss that lasted for three or four months. And I mean, this bliss was incredible. It was there 24 hours a day. Um, I, you know, my eyes used to be crossing, my jaw used to be going uh, when I was driving into work. I would I would find that I would need to take time out and, and not deal with people. Um, but it didn't it didn't really speed up the awakening process. So I found the light transmissions, the, the light transmission sped up the awakening up to unity consciousness. And then the super mental force brings you beyond unity to the Brahman and para Brahman. They're yeah, uh, very, very advanced states. I mean, if if you ask me what was my favorite, uh, I like the the super mental force. Yeah. Can you read when you're working with somebody what force they might need the most, or what force their system is longing for? Oh, okay. So, for instance, I was ju- I'm just back from a seven day retreat in Portugal, and we use quite a lot of the different transmissions and. So some people, they're really, really suited. They'll go, oh, the sat, the super mental or the sat, it, it's known as well. They just get it. They get, and they'll sit there and it'll take them into samadhi. That's that's what will happen. They'll start to experience equanimity. And then other people are are just, they like the, the Shakti energy. They like the movements, the, the feminine energy. So they get, they, they get what they want. They get whatever they need. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. But... When you meet someone, can you see which force, uh, or is it kind of hit and miss? You you send them all. You send them uh, uh, each uh, an appetizer of each, and you see which one they respond best to. Yeah, I mean, g- generally in a one to one session, I'll work with a light transmission because most people they want to they 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 want to advance along that awakening process. So I'll, I'll start each session off with a light transmission. Uh, it takes about 10 to 12 minutes. I'll bring in in light. Light and light is metaphor is a metaphor for information. So I'm opening up the system and bringing down information in the metaphor of light down into, into, into their systems, which are sealed. They seem to be sealed off, okay? And I bring light down and I expand it beyond the limitations of, of what they are, okay? And over time, that will eventually lead to self-realization, God consciousness, unity consciousness. So I normally start with that and then there'll just be Shakti energy, just transmitting anyway. And then the sap will just come as well. It's just in there. It's just in there. It'll start coming. And they feel very different. The, the, the Shakti energy is more of a warm, fuzzy, loving energy, whereas the sat comes down and in through the top of the head and it, it pulls deep states of meditation and samadhi. And can you go uh, tell us, For some of our listeners aren't familiar with some of these Sanskrit terms, so uh, the sat or the supramental energy connects you with Brahman, could you just uh, maybe define those terms a little bit for us? Yeah. Okay. So, so Brahman is the absolute. So it's it's consciousness before it became conscious. Okay. So there's absolutely nothing there. It's outside of creation. And what happens is when when an individual in creation reaches that state of Brahman, it, the soul, the self, the awareness at the center of them is reunited with that that sea, that ocean of consciousness that's outside of creation, okay? And then what happens is the soul comes back down into creation and there's a conduit is then created. That that Brahman, the power of the Brahman can then enter our world. And it's almost like it's now a dynamic channel for them forces to create positive change on the planet. Beautiful. Yeah. Gareth, those were the uh, spiritual teacher for 26 years whose philosophy and teaching was very much to focus on your obstacles to greater awakening, you know, focusing on your kind of impure motivations, 
to know yourself in exquisite detail mm. as as the path to greater consciousness. Yeah. Um, your system seems to be very different than that. And I've seen people who sometimes have these sudden awakenings or kundalini awakenings. They have a very expanded experience, but they don't know themselves at all. And they can sometimes do yeah. uh, unfortunate things in their behavior. What do you think of all that? I totally agree. So so especially men with, with uh, kundalini awakenings, one of the first things is, oh, I'm enlightened. I'm the next coming. Uh, I, you know, I'm I, I see it all the time. And I have to I have to reel them in. I'm like, no, no, no. You have to come back to awareness, being small, being humble. Uh, this, this is just the ego wants to grab hold of these mystical experiences. Uh, there's no uh, what's the word? It's like there's no depth to the awakening yet uh, oh. with these mystical experiences. A lot of a lot of work on the human has to be done. Um, yeah. How did you escape that? I, I I do recognize that you have a very humble way of being, despite all these different, you know, God forces landing on your head every day. <laughs> you know, how have you avoided yeah. uh, being caught up in that? I was shown past lives and I was I had three very advanced past lives where where I was part of a, a ashram. Uh, my level of consciousness was quite high into this life. I had no trauma, no trauma in my system when I went through my awakening. I mean, there was some small stuff, you know, as I advanced uh, there was some small stuff to do with abandonment, you know, some issues with my mother, but it, it was cleared up really, really fast. Uh, I did psychotherapy with a friend of mine. Um, you know, I, I, anything that was there, anything that I could use to to advance this awakening, I went after, you know, whether it was Native American sweat lodges, ice baths. Um, you know, I, I, I took psilocybin a number of times journeyed inwards, anything that I could do. If there was something there, I wanted to root it out and find it. And it was holding me back. But there wasn't a lot. Yes. Brian? So during, in, in your book and what you just described, trying all, all of these different things, there's a, there's a sense that you would meditate in the desire of gaining certain wisdom or certain transmission or a certain type of force. And then for a while that would kind of fade. And then you would want to go to the next one and the next one. And, and there's this series of things, but was there ever a time when you sort of stopped and said, wait a minute, all this desire for a state other than what's happening right now is not really necessary and just kind of, relaxed into in, into what is i mean there now uh brian that like i mean that seeking energy completely fell away there's no transmissions i don't read teachers books i don't look at anything you know it, it all fell away at a certain level but but i knew at certain stages i wasn't done i wasn't cooked yet i knew there was more and i just would do whatever i had to do to 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 get fully cooked Mm. Right. And so perhaps um, people really need to go through that, that sort of period of, of, of desiring before they can drop that actively trying to change their experience. In other words, it's, it's, you can't just all of a sudden yeah. say, okay, yeah. I'm going to drop wanting anything. <laughs> you have to go through really wanting it yeah. for a while yeah. before you can. Yeah, I, I would call it spiritual griefs, and there's nothing wrong with it when, you know, people are seeking, there, there needs to be a certain amount of energy to move towards this. And, and most of the times it is the ego searching for something, you know, it, it can't find lasting in career, in relationships, in material, you know, objects and items. So it sees spirituality and it's like, okay, well, I've checked, checked everywhere else, it must be in this spirituality. So that's what happens. It goes, it goes first into this spiritual awakening, and you know, then it realizes it's too late. Yeah, I can relate. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm curious, Gareth. Um, 
you've gone through various awakenings. Do you, do you still feel like a Gareth character or do you feel like a, a, a force of Shakti energy or, or other energy? What, what's it like being you nowadays? Oh, so it's, I, I still maintain, I, I, like, you know, I'm still very grounded. I'm still very down to earth. I'm not one of these people who, who you know, spiritually bypasses the, the human. Um, you know, I've got kids. I, you know, I, I yeah, I, I, I'm still here in the physical reality. Uh, but I'm also a channel for them divine forces that can come in. And especially when I work with people. So it's like I can be, I don't meditate anymore. I don't do any you know, spiritual practice. I don't meditate, don't do self-inquiry. I don't do mantras. So my life would be, I go running most days. I, you know, I look after my kids. Um, yeah, just very normal, very down to earth person. Um, but then when I'm in on a retreat or working with people online, it's that force can just come down at will and work through me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any sense of mission or thought or hope for the future of how things will go or is it just kind of this is what's happening now and that's good and and you just are in a more passive position um there is there is something yeah there is a mission that will um yeah it's it's uh, i i know what's happened i can sense it it's you know i'm at the moment i'm working with groups especially in my, my retreats, you know, there's like 30 people, 35. And I can just see that my ability to be able to reach more people is just growing and growing. You know, th there's no limit to what I can do with these energies. You know, I can I can sit there for five, seven days and this energy is just I, I could fill a stadium with it. You know, there's no limit. It's like 35 people. I could have 35,000 people uh, and affect them with that energy as well. So I know it will over time, the people, it, it's going to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To what degree, I don't know. But but I'm open to everything. I'm open to everything. So I was thinking of returning to the question that Jonathan asked me because I believe there probably are other people who are skeptical, and uh, and I was too, and to a certain extent still am, but I think that the best way to do it is, I just want to tell you about my my experience, and then see, and then take it from there. So forgive me if I go on a little bit here, but yes, I've always been a skeptical because I didn't, I've never been in a situation where transmission was claimed where I felt something coming from outside of me. And Jonathan would tell me about experiences that he had that blew his mind, and maybe I was a little jealous of that, but still remain somewhat skeptical and thinking maybe there are two different types of people, like there are people, for example, who are hypnotically suggestible and people who aren't. And I thought, maybe I'm just not. So then, but I read your book, and uh, which I enjoyed very much. And during the course of reading your book, I got a feeling, oh, this is this rings true to me somehow. This this man is being honest about exactly what happened to him in his experience. And I got a kind of a a warm, kind of loving feeling while reading yeah. the book. So then I said, okay, this is happening. Let's experience it for myself. So yesterday I um attended your Tuesday night Zoom transmission meditation. And what happened then at first was that I got extremely restless, in particular in my legs. I just couldn't, they just wanted to be moving. I'm sitting there and they got very restless. And so I, I said, well, let me try. You had mentioned pranayama breathing, uh, which I'm no expert at. But I said, well, let me try that. And that all seemed sort of extremely difficult and effortful and not too helpful. And then I, I started thinking, well, um, is this really anything happening here? What's going on here? And then something occurred to me. And I thought, well, what if instead of sitting here doubting whether anything was happening, what if I just said to myself, yes, there is transmission happening? What if I just said, or maybe even pretended or imagined 
that there is. And then I started to feel joy and laughter bubble up. And I started shaking with inner laughter inside as soon as I, I let that go. And, and that was quite marvelous. And then that subsided for a while. And then after realizing, after not sh being sure what to do, I decided to do my own form of meditation, which is simply being awareness, looking at awareness, being it. And that always works for me in that it brings up causeless joy. Mm -hmm. And indeed, that happened then, but it was an extreme version of that. Again, shaking with inner laughter throughout this. And that was very nice. And the um, the restless in my legs calmed down, and that all calmed down, and then I fell asleep. Wow. So, so I just wanted to know, I, I'm confused by that because, oh, one more thing to add. So later that evening, 10 p.m. or something, you know, you know, you're probably, I don't know your hours, but it's overnight in Dublin. Yeah. I said, well, let me see if I can recreate this uh, and without a transmission. And I, I went through the imagining I was getting transmission from Gareth and imagining awareness. And it worked just the same. Yeah. The same yeah. bubbling came up. So that meant, left me a little confused, but open minded. So I was wondering if you could sort of respond to that. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, I am a skeptic. I'm the biggest skeptic you could ever meet. So so for me, it was all about like direct experience. I had to have a direct experience with all of these things. It was like, and like when you receive these transmissions, when, when they really get hold of you, you, you can't deny them. It's like something is happening here in my body. It, it, and it's not the mind. You're, you're switching the mind off and you're dropping into the body and you're 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 feeling what the body, the body's what the, what the body's experience of these subtle energies are, and they're palpable. So what you described there when you recreated it is these transmissions are always there. They're always available, right? You just need to, you need to be able to connect to them. It's the same way when I do the, the, the meditation on Zoom, the recording is put up on YouTube. And then that recording could be there for two or three years. People can come along, click play, and they receive that transmission. Two years later, the, the, some of the meditations still hold the transmissions. It's always there. You just need to know how to access it. So by you thinking about me, all of a sudden, that's your www.garrettransmission.com. And that's what brings opens. And that's how I used to do it. Ah, so I'm on the right track there. You're definitely on the right track. Yeah. Ah. So, yeah. so you're, you're saying like really, you know, uh, Holy Spirit transmission, you know, I'm ready. Or yeah. Gareth light transmission, I'm ready. Is it really, it's just a matter of clear intention and clear having intention. some initial experience probably helps. Yeah. So, so n n having a knowing of what you're connecting to and, and, and vice versa, me knowing you, that's the, that's the main connection. That's, mm -hmm. you know, but then once you're introduced to the energies, especially the super mental force, it, you know, so if you come on a retreat with me and you sit in the energies for three, four, five days, you've been introduced. You don't need me anymore, right? You leave the retreat and all of a sudden, it's like they, they, that energy puts a tracker on you, right? And you're on the other side of the world. And all of a sudden, it starts coming in at random times during the day, comes tapping on the top of the head. It wants you to sit down and meditate. And you'll feel it. And it's like, oh, I can feel it. Close my eyes. It'll work on you for an hour, 90 minutes. It can be rapturous sometimes. It can be absolutely, you know, really blissful and delightful. And then all of a sudden it'll do what it needs to do and it'll it'll recede and then you can go on about your day. And that's how it was for me. Mm. Yeah, I do get those types of energies. And sometimes I say, uh, excuse me, I'm busy now. Excuse me, I'm busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I say, oh, well, great. Good timing. I got an hour here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a wonderful description of it. And and 
you know, I used to be skeptical that this stuff can happen over Zoom. Is it more powerful in person than Zoom? Uh, we, you and I haven't met in person, yeah. uh, but, you know, one-on-one, uh, -on -one it was uh, enough that, you know, I was like, if this was any more powerful, my body might explode. <laughs> yeah, in person, it's even stronger. It's just, yeah, it's even stronger. It's even stronger. So, so we just did, and we have a mutual friend um, who came uh, from San Francisco and uh, he did the seven days. And we, I think we had like tw a group of 25 people and we would start at eight in the morning and we would go all the way till 10 o'clock at night. And we did that for seven days. And I mean, it's incredible. It really is. It, and each day is building each session, you know, from one session to the next session, the energies are building. They're doing different things. They're clearing in some sessions, the next sessions, you know, it's awakening the next sessions. It's, it's, you know, uh, Shakti, it's Kundalini for some people. Yeah. So there's a lot of work going on. It's exciting. Uh, which is why our mutual friend and I would like you to do a retreat in America. So keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I keep getting asked now. Yeah. Anything else, Brian? Well, I think it would also be fun to come to Dublin too. You just want to come for the Guinness though, Brian. Yeah, no? that's, that's right. I just want to come for the Guinness. Um, I also make a side trip to Cork where my ancestors are from. Yeah. Or yeah. half of them. Yeah. But it would I be can tell by the name. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Gareth, from your point of view, why is it that some people are so much more sensitive to these transmissions than others? So, okay, so we're not all on the same level. So we're not all people's level of consciousness are different. So you have souls that have done multiple, multiple thousands of lifetimes. You've got some that have done, you know, somewhere in the middle, and then you've got new souls coming in who aren't aren't advanced. Uh, so, so generally, the people who are attracted to me are serious spiritual seekers who have done thousands of lifetimes. They they want they want they want to break free from the wheel of karma. Um, uh, they're done. They're 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 ready to move on. Um, and people. People don't just find me. It's not a mistake. They don't like they don't mistakenly come and join my group. And and if they do, they don't feel the energies. Their systems just aren't open to them. Uh, they still have a lot of work to do. So it's it's generally advanced spiritual seekers who find their way in, into my groups. Uh, otherwise, they're just not attracted to me whatsoever. Now, uh, you do these free things on Tuesday and Friday, and we'll give our listeners uh, the information on how to connect with that. And let's say, you know, people like that energy. Is there a way that they can, like what Brian did the other day, they 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 think of you, how do they like think of you and open up to that energy again when you're not, quote, transmitting? And is that a useful thing to do? Yes, it, it is. So, so what I would say is that it's all about connecting to the energy. It's and opening up to it and letting it surrender. It's a path of surrender. Okay, right. it's 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 your you know some people it's the path of yoga where it's all self will. You know, I have to do self inquiry. I have to root out fears. This is the path of surrender and devotion. And you're opening up. You're saying I can't do this, and I surrender to something greater than me. Okay, and it's nothing to do with me as a person. You're not surrendering to me, Garrett, the person. You're surrendering to them energies, okay? And the energies are coming down, and they're doing the work in your system. But you have to, you have to get surrender on the being level, not on the intellectual level. Okay, you can't think about, oh, I think I'm surrendering. You have to really open up and like open every cell of your body to the to the forces, and. Uh, people can connect. I, I would say the easiest way to connect is just through one of my videos. Just go onto YouTube, one of my meditations. That That's the easiest way to make a connection. Uh, mm. After a while, after, you know, maybe a couple of weeks, a month or two, you could just, you know, like I get lots of times people report to me, they'll say, you know, I'm I'm driving down the the, the freeway at 3 p.m. I've got energy coming in. And then I realized that, 
it's your time in, in, in Dublin, you're doing your Zoom meditations. And without them being connected to the to the Zoom meeting, the energies are then going to them because of the connection. I got to be careful what I put on my schedule at one o'clock Pacific time on Tuesdays uh, in case I get zapped. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else you're curious about, Brian? Uh, no, these were a lot. I mean, yes, there are many, many things, but I think that um, really to get into the weeds, just read Waking Up from the Dream. And uh, because I think that, that, you know, there were so many levels and so many, um, you know, for instance, you, you, you talked about going from self-realization through God consciousness, through unity consciousness, through Sahaja Samadhi and finally Brahman as the individual that the, the stages that an individual goes through. Yeah. I don't know if we have time to go into the, each one of them by detail, but you know, if we had a couple hours, it, it would be it would be great. But sometimes I got confused as to what the distinction was among all of those. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so do you want me to, to describe them briefly? Sure, that'd be that'd be great. Okay, so so most people on the planet, okay, they identify as the body, the mind, the ego. They are a separate entity from everyone else. Okay, ignorance. We, we would call that ignorance. It's not the nicest of words, but it's that's what it is. It's ignorance. Um, at a certain stage, the soul it goes through multiple multiple lifetimes, realizes that it can't find any sort of lasting happiness or peace in the in the in the outside world okay and that's um it's it's basically what happens is dejection the soul goes into dejection and it sends out a call and the call comes in the form of the guru of the the scriptures uh, you know you know different books might arrive to help the spiritual seeker okay for me i think it was Eckhart Tolle all of a sudden i discovered that there was a a practice in the power of now. I'd never, I'd never stopped to think about being in the present moment. And that's what all of a sudden I started to uh, become aware that, oh, there was gaps in between the thoughts. There was stillness. There was peace. There was witnessing. And all of a sudden you're coming out of ignorance and you're moving into the state of the witness. You're, you you realize there's something at the, at the center of what you are that is the witness to your world. While you're typing on the keyboard, it's, it's watching, it's listening to your thoughts. It's always there. It's not yet self-realization. In self-realization, the witness almost stops witnessing and it turns around, pivots, and it witnesses itself. And it realizes, oh, hang on, there's more going on in there than there is out here. And it realizes that it's unbounded. It was never born. It never dies. It's eternal. It's the eternal witness to everything. It's like it, it finds the bathroom cord, the light, pulls it, the lights come on. It can. It knows what it is. Uh, so that's that's self-realization. That happens in a snap. Uh, and it's, it's irreversible. Once it happens, it happens. Uh, it's quite a simple state. I mean, it's it's it's. I won't say it's an easy state to attain, but when it happens, it's like, wow, how did I miss this? How, this has been here all along. Somehow, I just wasn't able to to feel it or sense it. Uh, the second phase is when that awareness that's awake starts to look out through your eyes, and it starts to say, well, okay, if I am the eternal self inside. I must be what's on the outside. And it's this is sort of like an opening and a closing. And for me, it used to happen when I'd go for a walk in nature. All of a sudden, it was like an aperture would open up and I would see myself in this, you know, the sun, the trees, everything looked vibrant and new and fresh. And it was really beautiful. A lot of love, the heart opens. Uh, and that's what they, they call is a God consciousness. The next phase is unity consciousness. And the basically what happens in unity consciousness is that self on the inside, the, the boundaries, the, the limitations of, of your being dissolve and your consciousness merges with the collective consciousness. So you have a sense of being home, no matter where you are, you sort of merge out into your surroundings. If everything feels panoramic. 
it's like wow it's not it's not it sounds really mystical but when it happens it's like wow it's like you know before I would have a sense that I need to get home and, and, and you know, be sat on my sofa to be home. But now it doesn't matter where I am. I'm, I just merge into my surround. I can be in the middle of a city and, and, and still be home. Uh, so the limitations, if it almost feels like the edges of what you are dissolve and your consciousness merges with the collective. Um, and it's a really beautiful state. Uh, Sahaja Samadhi is the eye, the eye thought that that resides in the heart that dissolves, that eventually drops back down from the intellect into the heart and it dissolves. I think I think some people, they describe that as awakening in the heart level. Uh, you know, it drops from the intellect down into the heart. The eyeness dissolves more. It's more of an a, a, encompassing, loving sensation. But the eye, the eye, the eye dissolves, it dies. It's it's no longer the, the root cause of all our suffering. Um, Brahman consciousness is when the soul eventually gets sucked back into the ocean of the absolute. And it, it knows itself as Brahman before it became conscious. What a beautiful summary. I'm so glad I asked that question. Yeah, yeah. That was that's not easy to do. That was uh, that was uh, my entire religious studies uh, college experience in in three minutes. Yeah, um, it, and and you know what? It's because I know it so well, and I, I I've lived all of them states, and it's this is this, this is what I do. I'm 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 constantly guiding people through these states, and I I can tell where they are, and I it's like. It's like I, I took up running, and my dad was a uh, my dad was an elite runner. He was like really, really uh, gifted runner. And all of a sudden, I was I was calling him up, and he was saying, "No, you need to slow down here or speed up this part." part. And he was able to guide me, and that's what I'm doing. It's it's mm -hmm. I can I've walked that path, and I'm able to say, "Well, look, you know, just up above, there's a couple of road bumps. You need to just." And, and that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing with people. I'm I'm guiding them through them different states. I'm, I'm I'm helping them navigate the different stages of awakening. Yeah, yeah. And you do it really well with a, a nice attitude. And and uh, I really feel honored to be able to to you know be the recipient sometimes of that. Yeah, I I do it with humor, and I do it, uh, you know, because I I don't see myself above anyone or lower than anyone. We're all the same. We're all here to awaken, and if I can help people, that's that's what I want to do. If people want to learn more about you or or become aware of these meditations you do, what's the best way of doing that? So they can do, go onto my website. Uh, it's truespiritualawakening.eu um, and they can join the meditations. They're free. I don't ask for anything. That's on a Tuesday and a Friday at 9 p.m. UK time. Uh, they can also get my book on Amazon, Waking Up for the Dream. And I just released the audiobook version. So that's out there as well now on some of the, 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 the platforms. That was a lot of yeah. fun. And that contains a transmission. Ah, right. Yeah. Included in the uh in the yeah. retail price. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. That's great. And I hear that um you're going to for our listeners transmit energy now and that's there'll be silence. You you don't talk during your transmissions, but people can tap into the energy field even in the recording. Is that correct? Absolutely, yeah. So there's no space and time with with regards to these energies. The recording is the it, it's like the connection. So basically, all they have to do is close their eyes, go inwards, and put their attention on the body. What how the body is feeling? Be as receptive as possible, and uh, just see what happens for the ten minutes. That sounds great. Let's do it. Okay. Okay, great. So we, we, we'll we'll just close our eyes for ten minutes or so.
the invitation is over. Thank you. I had the uh, weird experience of going deep into something and then not knowing how long I'd been there, checking, oh, that's been about 10 minutes. But then I realized, oh, I'm on a podcast now. Who am I? Where am I? What's going on? <laughs> Brilliant. Fortunately, we've done enough of these and uh, we can we can sort of relax and not worry as much. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. thank you so much yeah. for that. <laughs> no problem. No problem. My pleasure. And okay. um, yeah, so so that will be held in this recording on in the audio, in the video for months, years. Pe viewers, you know, five years down the line can still connect to that. It's incredible. The Lord works in mysterious ways as we are all learning. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Well, to our Patreon supporters, thank you to Gareth. Thank you for all the powers that be. And we thank our listeners and keep exploring. Keep exploring. Thank you for listening to Awareness Explorers. To learn more, you can check out our website at awarenessexplorers.com. Please subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast app. We'd love it if you would post a review. And please share our link on Facebook and with family and friends, because knowing yourself as awareness is the greatest gift you can give yourself or someone you love. Thank you.